Welcome back to the How to Create an E-Course mini-series, I guess you could call it. This is video two of three, production. You can DIY or hire a production company to film your e-course, and there's pros and cons to both. So if this is your very first e-course, you've never created one before, DIY it honestly. See if it gets any traction in the market, and if it does, you can always come back and re-record it professionally with new content. If you are a seasoned e-courser or educator, hiring somebody to produce your content for you is really going to serve you. Having professional like 4k video, cool backdrops like this, sets, creating b-roll for your videos and all the other things that a production crew is going to bring to your e-course is just going to help it sell for more and more often and build credibility for you as an educator. So full disclosure, this is what I do for a living. I create a ton of e-course content for other people and myself and creating an e-course can come in anywhere from $2,500 to $15,000 plus, depending on the size of the e-course and what all is involved in it. So hold that in mind if you're thinking about hiring a production company to create a course for you. It is an investment, but if you have a track record of making good money on your courses, this is just going to elevate that and you're going to see higher ROI with professional production. If you're looking to DIY it but you don't have any equipment, I do want to be honest about the fact that buying all the equipment needed to produce an e-course can come in anywhere between like 500 to a thousand dollars so you should be prepared to at least invest in a good camera and good audio to do something like this so a quick caveat on quality i totally understand that all of us entrepreneurs are balling on a budget and if this is your very first e-course and you want to create it yourself you want to diy it the products that I do have linked in my Kitco are the cheapest quality cameras, lenses, audio equipment that I've personally used over the years that are going to do a really good job for you. Are there cheaper ways to do this? Yeah, you could film a whole e-course on your iPhone if you wanted to, but I think you're going to have more success if you at least use a DSLR camera and a nice lav mic so that you can create a professional-ish looking product from home. The next part of producing your e-course is to film it. So if you're a screen recording or you're just doing a PowerPoint, you can skip this part. But if you're going to be filming yourself on camera like I'm doing right now, here's a couple of my tricks. One, film yourself in 4K because when you mess up on your words, you can punch in a little bit and punch out to take out that mess up so it looks really professional and seamless. And if you're shooting in 4K, you're not going to lose any quality in your video when you do that. Next is to invest in good lighting. You can see here, I actually have a light over here to kind of balance out my skin tone because I have a window over here. So investing in good lighting doesn't have to be expensive. Again, the products linked in my Kitco are the cheapest things that I could find that are going to do a good job for you. But investing in lighting is really going to help. You don't want to be filming like in a dark dungeon type looking place where you're all grainy and people can't really make out your facial details. You want people to connect with you on camera. And the best way to do that is to be really well, be really well lit. The next most important part of filming any e-course is audio recording. Your audio has to be spot on for somebody to tolerate listening to your course because people might look away and back and forth between the video and if your video is subpar they're gonna forgive it but if they're having a hard time hearing you or they can't understand what you're saying people have no time for that and they're going to return your course. Next is the delivery of your lesson. So when you're producing an e-course it can be really tempting thing to be like I'm gonna do the entire course in a day but hear me out in my professional experience people are only good on camera for like three to four hours beyond that you're 
the mouth starts to get dry, you'll stumble over your words, you're gonna have trouble reading off of like a teleprompter app or reading your script on your computer if you're trying to do that for more than two to three hours. You just get really tired. It's physically and mentally draining to deliver these lessons. So try to break it up into two to three hour chunks so that you maintain your energy and you can come on camera and be yourself and have a personality. If you're curious about how long it's actually going to take you to deliver your script, I've found that people can read and deliver about 100 words a minute. So if you take your script and you do the word count and you divide it by 100, that's how many minutes it's gonna take you to say all of those things with inflection and expression and still coming across like super fun and energetic for your audience. So let's talk about the most labor intensive part of an e-course is post-production, which is you've filmed it, you have your audio, you've got everything together, now you have to edit it. And you would be surprised how many people I've met who have like filmed an e-course and have never launched it because they couldn't physically or mentally get through the editing process because it is grueling. So audio and video editing is a skill. Like it's literally a trade. People do it for a living like me. And if that is not your skill set or you've never done it before, it can feel really daunting. So I wanna encourage you to take it a little bit at a time. Don't set an unrealistic deadline. Give yourself six to 12 weeks to edit your course and take it a lesson at a time. Maybe you tell yourself I'm gonna do three lessons a week, right? And just split it up. Take your time, make it manageable because if not, you're going to get really burnt out on it. Another option is always to outsource it to somebody. I've edited courses people have filmed at home for them because they just couldn't get through the post-production process. They didn't have the energy or they did something wrong and they needed me to fix their audio or brighten up their video. There's lots of different ways that you can get this thing produced that can be DIY or outsourcing it to somebody else, but it takes a lot of time. My next to last tip is to give yourself a generous timeline. Editing an e-course takes a really long time and you're gonna have a lot of revisions along the way. And you might even find that you've messed up on a few things and you wanna re-record, or if you're working in a really fast paced industry, by the time you get your e-course edited, the data might have changed. Your course might already be outdated, so you need to go back and update things along the way. So I don't want you to get frustrated with that process, but just keep in mind that it's gonna take a long time. Even me as a professional, I don't promise anybody an e-course less than six weeks, because that's just how long it takes to grind through all this content. Another note on giving yourself a generous timeline is do not set a launch date until your course is finished. As in, it is edited. You have it in your hand. You could sell it to somebody today. Do not announce it or launch it before you have the final product done and you're happy with it. The editing process can literally drag out forever. You can tinker and edit this content until you're blue in the face. And at some point, you're going to have to call it done and put it out to the world. But until then, do not promise this course to anybody. Don't do pre-sales at this point. Don't talk about it. Just get it done. And then you're going to start the pre-launch process, which we're going to talk about in the next video. And my final note on producing your e-course is exporting the actual videos. So what you need to keep in mind here is if you're not somebody who has worked in the video production field or audio production field, exporting is when you have all the audio and the video edited, you've put everything on screen that you want to be on screen. Now you have to export it to get that final MP4 video file. So what you need to keep in mind here is that you're exporting in at least 1080p HD and that you are exporting in the proper format for your delivery platform. So Google around on your delivery platform and see, is there a maximum file size? Is there a maximum resolution? And when you're editing, look to see if there's any mistakes or like blips in the footage before you put it out into the world. So that's all I have for production and post-production. Check out the next video, three of three on selling your e-course.